Is it safe to say that the house of John Varvatos or John Varvatos has that universal appeal that's well accepted by the fragrance community and everybody around the world? Let's take a look at all the offerings that I have in this good, bad, ugly, underrated, and overrated, the last one of 2017. Let's do it. So as I normally do, um, I'm gonna cover all the offerings that I have from this house, which in total are 11. But what I'm gonna do it this time around, I'm gonna do them chronologically in order that they were released. Starting with 2004 with the original or self-titled John Vervedo signature and ending with 2017 latest release, Artisan Pure. So before I go over all the offerings that I have, I just wanted to let you guys know that the perfumer of all these fragrances, the in-house perfumer that John Vervedo uses is actually Rodrigo, is actually Rodrigo Flores Rowe which trained and developed under none other than Jean-Claude Elena. And he has an extensive, amazing portfolio of all releases. Not only the ones that I'm gonna go over here today, but he has a ton of great releases that he has released over the past decades. So the first men's fragrance introduced by the house of John Vervados was actually 2004, or self-titled John Vervados, which to me is a phenomenal leather. You're gonna see that leather theme here throughout the whole collection. This here is a plum leather cinnamon that's extremely inviting. Just great scent all year round, signature scent worthy. You can wear this, the way I like to wear this is mostly casual night outs or for work. It works perfectly for the office. It's very elegant, very sophisticated, but you can also wear this for a date scent. Um, I think it's more on the mature side, but like I said, it's a combination of plum, cinnamon, and leather with a little bit of a creamy sandalwood in the dry down. It's just a fantastic scent. Try this if you haven't. You can find all these fragrances with the exception of a couple easily at bargain bins, which is great. Definitely worth checking out. So going from 2004 to 2006, where John Vervato's Vintage came out. Now this one here is gonna give you a little bit of a barbershop feel with a modern twist. Twist here with a rhubarb note, the cinnamon, and also it's going to have like a Shepra effect. So think about older lavender, you know, barbershop feel scents with this modern twist of cinnamon, rhubarb, leather, it's gonna give you this, again, all these fragrances are gonna be very comforting, universally you know, accepted. They're gonna be mass appealing, great smelling. The only thing about most of these fragrances is that I get about five to six hours on average. But some of them, like I'll cover and tell you guys about it, will actually give me eight plus. But this one here, about six hour mark is the most I'll get from this fragrance. If I spray my clothes, I get a nice little sillage. But as we all know, Jumper Vados, we, we talk about how amazing they smell. If only they gave us amazing projection and, and longevity with all these offerings, they would be up there with fragrance houses like Dior, Yves Saint Laurent, so forth and so, and so on. But Jar Vettos Vintage is great for night out, great romantic. It's, it's again, a great old lavender feel with those, you know, barbershop feel scents with that modern twist with the rhubarb, the cinnamon, and the leather here. A little bit on the sweeter side, but they all smell fantastic. They all gonna make you smell great, and vintage is no difference. Um, I have a couple bottles of this. I went through a couple bottles. It's one of my favorites from the house. Before I go into the other one, I wanted to mention a thing I forgot. This has also a beautiful note of tobacco in here. So again, it's tobacco, it's leather, and the sweeter side with the rhubarb and the cinnamon. Just great. Try this. Again, you can find this at bargain bins. No problem, and you're gonna smell great. In 2009, there were two releases on that year, and I purchased both of the releases. The first one was Artisan, which the bottle looks great. It has that wicker kind of, uh, you know, artistic, artsy feel to it. Uh, the scent itself is a citrus aromatic. You know, think of fragrances like a Neroli Portofino, 4711. It's gonna give you that, you know, aromatic citrus with an ambery undertone. It smells great. Again, this one doesn't last long. On my skin, I get like three or four hours tops. If I spray my clothes, I get about four and a half, five, but it smells fantastic. You know, for the summer, for the springtime, great for work. You can wear this casually, you know, running errands. It just smells great. If it only performed a little stronger, it would be uh, one of my favorite top choices for, for the hot weather. But again, 2009 release. Artisan, uh, the first one in the series, as you'll see, they released a lot of different ones, a lot of flankers on this series, but this is the first one in 2009. Now, this next one here, also from 2009, I believe they were going to release a series of these uh, fragrances. This is called Rock Volume 1. I think Rock Volume 2 was supposed to be released, but they never actually continued the series. I think they axed the series, you know, just like they have the Signature, the Vintage, then they have the Artisan series. I believe they were going to do another uh, continuation with the Jumbo Vados Rock Volume series. This is volume one. I believe volume two was supposed to be scheduled for the next 2010 or 2011. It never came to fruition. I think this series was axed. But this here is a very mysterious 
Very intriguing kind of scent where you have, again, the leather note em embellished by rose, vanilla, and coffee. It's almost a gourmand territory, but it has a beautiful leather accord here. It smells fantastic. It's one of those fragrances that I wear for romantic situations, you know, going out in the evening time, dress your occasions. And I wear this very gingerly because it's very hard to find. I had a hard time locating this fragrance. It took me years to find it. I finally found it a couple years ago. I'm happy to have this in my collection. I think it's definitely a great, great release. And it's sad that they discontinued the line, the rock volume. Uh, even this one has been discontinued. You can't easily find it, but it's definitely a great leather, vanilla, rose coffee scent. Again, very mysterious, very alluring. Beautiful for night out and romantic situations. You know, if you can, try it, but it's not gonna be an easy task. This is Rock Volume 1 from 2009. And by the way, this thing is heavy. You can knock somebody out with this fragrance. If you think Parfums and Molly fragrances are heavy, it's probably the heaviest bottle I have in my collection. Just a little fun fact. All right, the next release here, not to be confused with another fragrance that was also released the same year. This year is Jean Varvato's Platinum, and they also released one called 10th Anniversary. Pretty much they're the same scent. It's gonna be this leathery, creamy, vanilla, incense, vetiver kind of a scent. I love this one here, it's, it's fantastic. It's got niche quality. You know, think of, you know, fragrances like Jubilation 25, you know, uh, Mitsa from Dior. It's gonna give you that kind of a niche feel. It smells great. If you like leather, again, the theme of leather is throughout the series, and this one here is no slouch. Uh, if you get the 10th anniversary one, which is a little harder to find, or the platinum, which I, can, I think you can find in discounters, both of them are great. They smell pretty much the same. I don't see really much differences in the two. Um, again, it's going to be that creamy leather with incense and vetiver. It smells amazing. Great, again, for dresser occasions. Um, and you can also wear this as signal. Most of these fragrances are going to give you, like I said, five to six hour range. So you can wear them, you know, for the office. They're not going to be offensive. Nothing here is going to be too offensive or too crazy with the exception of a couple that I haven't yet covered, but this here is Platinum from 2010, definitely a great release from the house. Okay, so this next release here from 2013 is the one that really took me by surprise, and what I mean I say that, and what I, and what I mean when I say that is because it's called Artisan Aqua, and as far as an aquatic scent, this is not an aquatic scent at all, so don't let the name fool you. It's in fact a citrus aromatic with a barbershop feel. Um, I get a very not aged, but classic vintage feel with this fragrance. It's almost like you take a citrus aromatic, like the Rue Portofino, and you combine it with a Dracar Noir. That's what I get with this, with this fragrance, and it lasts a long time. This is one that really, from all the fragrances that I talked about so far, gives me eight plus hours. And like I said, the initial blast is gonna be very citrus, very aromatic, then it quickly transitions into this like Dracar Noir meets the Rue Portofino kind of a feel, which I love. Um, this is definitely one that, that knocked me off my, my feet. I, I was really surprised by this fragrance. I thought it was just going to be a regular aquatic for, for the summertime. But this is actually something that I went all year round except for like maybe late fall and winter. But definitely a great release from 2013. And a great thing, it's going to perform for you. And if you like that kind of a fragrance, if you like the fragrances that I mentioned before, uh, you know, Neuro Portofino, 4711, Dracar Noir, something that has almost like a, a you know, barbershop feel with a citrus but it actually lasts. Try this one, you're gonna really be impressed. I, I'm impressed with this one. All right, now the next one here is actually from 2014. And I have to say this is probably a very underwhelming uh, release if, if, if I have to tell you the truth. This here is from 2014 and it's Jean Vervato's Oud. Uh, what I get out of this fragrance, you get the original signature and then you infuse rose and oud and incense. And that's what you get here. It smells really good, it's pleasant, it's a great oud for someone who's beginning. By the way, this is not real metal, this is plastic, which is again another underwhelming factor. The cap is solid metal, you have the fleur de lis up here. Um, it smells great, you know, there's no problem here, but it's, it's an oud that's not going to last too long. It's going to give you maybe five to six hours and it's nothing really groundbreaking. So it was very underwhelming to, to tell you the truth. And when it comes to fragrances like this, if you want a designer oud fragrance, if you're starting with ouds and you want something um, to get your, your feet wet, I would not recommend this. I would recommend stuff like Boss Bottled Oud or even Versace's Oud. I think those are gonna be uh, much better uh, bang for your buck, you know, much better performer, much better smelling. So. Again, this, this is very underwhelming for me, so let's just leave it at that for now. Quite the opposite here. In 2015, they released a fragrance called Dark Rebel that started the new, you know, series of, you know, the, the Dark Rebel, the Dark Rebel Rider. So this is another one that's like a biker kind of a series. 
I love the creativity, the, you know, how innovative they were with the bottles here. Again, the floor, the leaves up here, solid metal cap. Smells fantastic. By the way, the sprays on these fragrances are really nice. You get a nice mist, nice distribution, nothing crazy. But this one here was quite nice. You take that signature, uh, you know, John Bravados from 2004, and this is from 2015. You give this enamelic leather feel, which is, is quite surprising. It's instancy, it's leathery, it's a little bit enamelic. Nothing pungent, nothing in your face that's going to turn noses, but it's definitely more on a daring side. And I get seven to eight hours with this. So this here is a breath of fresh air for this house. Definitely going to a direction that I like to see designers going. Uh, you know, the niche territory with the dark leather instancy kind of scents. Uh, kudos, great job on this one from 2015. So by the way, this is really captivating. It has that cognac leather tobacco kind of feel. Uh, so if you like those kind of notes, definitely check this one out. Now in 2009, they had two releases. In 2016, they also had two releases. And I have to say, both of them were quite nice. One for the warmer days and one for the colder days, which I'll cover in a, in a second. So this is John Vervato's Artisan uh, Blue, which continues the Artisan series. Now this one here, it takes that citrus aromatic feel, but it also infuses it with lavender, which gives you a little bit of a barbershop feel but it also gives you pine needle, which is just fantastic if you like, you know, those pine needle kind of scents, which I love, it gives gives the scent some, some character and also added the note of pistachio here, which I really get when it gets to the heart and the dry down. So as you see, I don't know if you could see here, but I, I put quite a dent on this fragrance over the past year and a half and I plan to wear this a lot in the springtime. So definitely one of my favorite releases, uh, Jumbo Rada's Artisan Blue, again, very creative touch here with the citrus aromatic, adding the lavender, making the pine needles to give this a little bit of a, you know, a sharpness, uh, but really giving the, the scent character and the pistachio note that really envelops the scent and gives it a, a really nice touch. Other release for 2016 is Dark Rebel, John Bravado's Dark Rebel Rider. This is the leather jacket of the Fredcom. Really cool model. Again, I love the creativity. I love how innovative they are, you know, Rodrigo Flores and the whole group there with John Bravados. They do a fantastic job, they smell great. And this one here also is going to give you a nice performance. I get about seven to eight hours with this. This is dark leather with, just like the bottle, with resins, uh, spices, and cocoa. It has a nice cocoa note in here. You know, think of Lidge from Guerlain. You know, it's going to have a really nice effect. I love this in winter time. Like I said, if this gave me eight plus hours, this would be on my top designer, uh, you know, winter of 2020 for this year. But it's one that I, like I said, if you don't like stuff that's really pungent, it's gonna last a long time. If you want a dark scent, that's gonna give you a nice, you know, seven hour, six, seven hour, you know, mark. This is definitely really, really nice. I love what they did here. Uh, definitely one of the best releases from the house. Check Dark Rebel Rider. It's, it's really, different. It's going to a different direction than, than most of the designer scents out there. So I like what I see from, from JV uh, up to this point. I think we're only going to see better things. Rodrigo is just a very creative guy and one of the great perfumers of our time. So definitely check Dark Rebel Rider. And last but not least, now here's the good news. It seems like uh, the house of John Ravados is really trying to change or work on the longevity and projection situation that I'm, I'm sure that they hear us they listen to reviewers. I'm sure that they're, they're probably figuring out, hey, listen, we can do much better if we only, you know, amp up the performance of our fragrances. And this one here is, is one that shows us that it's released probably at a wrong time because right now it's getting really cold here in the East Coast. But, you know, I guess you're already looking at springtime up ahead, which is only a few months uh, to come you know, a couple months from now. This is Artisan Pure 2017 release. Just was released about a month, a month and a half ago. Now this is a beautiful citrus aromatic, again, continuing the Artisan series. What I love about the scent is because it's gonna give you that nice citrus aromatic feel. It has pedigrain, it has a whole bunch of citrus, you know, like orange, mandarins, but then it goes into this darker territory with musk, uh, with some amber, and it even gives you like a, a, a Bergamot 22 kind of feel as it dries down. So I really love this fragrance. I, tr I tried this, you know, I, I tested this a couple of times going into the office, but I mostly, I brought a decan, I actually sprayed it in the office because it's really cold out. It's about, you know, 30, 40 degrees now. It's getting really cold in the East Coast, but I can see this being one of my favorites for the spring up ahead. So definitely try this, go to a store, go to a Sephora, go to a, you know, a Macy's, try this fragrance. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And one thing I loved about this 
is that I got six to seven hours uh, for a citrus scent is really great. And I spray my clothes, I got A plus. And again, the dry down gives me that Bergamot 22 feel. So definitely one that I loved and I'm happy to have my collection. I just got, it was you know just released. I just got about a couple weeks ago and I'm glad to have this here to give you guys the, the GBU of John Varvato. So let me give you guys which ones I think are the best, which one is the, the good, the bad, the ugly, the underrated and the overrated of the house. So the good, the good from John Varvato's, I have to give it to the original, the 2004 uh, John Varvato signature, John Varvato self, self titles uh, fragrance. I love this fragrance, it's very easy to wear. If you like leather, like I do, and if you like plum, which is one of my favorite notes in, in perfumery, this one here is a must. Um, you're not gonna get, you know, amazing performance, but you're gonna get, you know, average to above average. If you spray your clothes like I do, you're gonna get a day's work, which is all I'm, lo all, all I'm looking for. If I can get a day's work out of a fragrance, that's good enough for me. And you can always reapply. I, I carry decants, and this is something that you can easily reapply and smell great, refresh. But it's a beautiful leather, plum, cinnamon, just, it's, it's sweet, it's inviting, it's comforting. So the good goes to the original, the signature John Ravadas. All right, so the bad you probably saw from how underwhelmed I was when I was talking about it. This is John Ravadas Oud. Um, I'm glad I didn't pay uh, retail for this fragrance. It's very underwhelming. It's very low performing. It's very faint. Uh, for a nude fragrance, I was expecting more. And you have a ton of great alternatives to a beginner Oud fragrance. You can get Versace Per Om Oud. You can get... Um, Gucci Intense Oud, you can get Boss Bottle Oud, there's a ton of greater options that, that are going to give you a better bank for your buck. So overall, this is definitely the bad from, from what I have. Okay, so the ugly from this house, I don't have it anymore, but it, it's going to appear next to me. I used to own a bottle of that fragrance, I gave it away because I just thought it clashed a lot. It was, you know, it had fruity notes like watermelon with coffee, dark leather. It, it was a really weird citrus with leather. It just clashed so hard on my skin. It just didn't smell good at all. It was a citrus, leathery, tropical fruit and coffee. It was just, to me, it smelled, it was a mess on my skin. So I gave it away. And for that reason, Artisan Black is the ugly from the house. And I don't have that anymore again. Didn't like the way it smelled, so I, I passed on to somebody else who did actually enjoy the fragrance. So that's the ugly for me. Underrated from this house has to go to Artisan Aqua. This is a great citrus aromatic with an uber lavender barbershop feel. If you like barbershop feels of old, like I told you, Dracar Noir, you know, many of the great barbershop feel fragrances, you must try this fragrance. You're gonna love it. It lasts a long time. This is from 2013, and this is the first one that I actually own from the house it actually smells pretty strong. I gotta be careful with the sprays on this one. It's not an aquatic, it's nothing like Aqua de Geos, it's not nothing like your, your really fresh aquatic. It starts off citrus aromatic, then it turns into this beautiful lavender barbershop feel. Try this, this is definitely the most underrated from the house. And I go as far as saying if this becomes discontinued or really hard to find, I don't know if this is discontinued or not, but I, I, I can tell you that it's going to fetch a pretty penny because it performs well and it smells fantastic. To me, it's the most underrated from the house. Now, the most overrated from the house, I would have to say, well, again, this house doesn't really have any fragrances that are really overrated and talked about in the fragrance community or in the fragrance world for that matter, but they all smell great. They all um, are very pleasant, very mass appealing, but this one here is uh, John Ravada's Vintage. At one point, um, you know, back in 2009, 2010, 11, when this was kind of hot in the Fragcom. It was making a lot of top fall lists. So I'm going to say that this is the most overrated from what I own from this house, but rightfully so. It's a great fragrance. Uh, it is overrated. It was overrated, not so much now, but it, it's a bargain bin scent that I urge you to try. You're gonna love it. It has that Shepra um, kind of, uh, you know, old fashioned, you know, eight, not aged, but classic Shepra effect you know, laced up with the leather, the cinnamon. All right, so the bottom line with this house is what can be said about John Vervedo's? I love the house. I think it's a great house. You get a good bang for your buck. It's one of those bargain bin discount to fragrance houses that quickly go to discount websites, but, or if you go to a Marshall or a TJ Maxx, you know you're gonna smell great with any of these. On average, like I said, you're gonna get five to six hours. Some of these actually gave me seven to eight, which is really not bad for what you pay for. A lot of these fragrances you can get for under 30 bucks. So I urge you to get some of these and try them. You're not gonna regret. It's a great bang for your buck, period. I love the house. Like I said, if it had better performance, it would be up there with your Dior's, your Yves Saint Laurent's, your Chanel's. 
and even even some of those houses are actually not as great performing as they once were. So Jump Revivals seem to be up in their game now with some of their latest releases. So all in all, a great house. Now I want to know from you guys which top houses you guys would like me to be doing a GBU here in 2018. Drop your comments below. Obviously let me know what are your top three choices from this house. Which one are your favorites? But also drop down in the comment section below which three houses you guys would like me to cover in 2018. Thank you so much for watching. You guys know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe for a lot more videos like this one. In the meantime, you guys know what to do. Share the passion, obviously. Keep on spraying. I'll see you guys in the next one.